One of the most defining features of the Catholic Church has been its insistence on protecting life. Believing that all life is created in the image and likeness of God, endowed with special dignity, we stand against all that threatens to take life away, acting in society and politics to create a better world. But this raises an interesting question. Why should we care? If we believe in eternal life in heaven, why should we care about protecting life here, the body, or anything in the physical world? Shouldn't we only care about saving souls? While it might be tempting to think this way, and some might want to disregard the physical world, doing so would be a grave misunderstanding of the nature of creation, the human person, and God's plan of salvation. This is Catholicism in Focus. Look to the social teaching of the Catholic Church, and you will find more than a few moral imperatives for how we are to act in the world and treat others. We are to oppose abortion, the death penalty, physician-assisted suicide, and euthanasia. War and violence are never goods in themselves and are only allowed under the strictest of circumstances. Poverty is dehumanizing and should be combated. The environment should be protected. Workers given fair treatment and the right to organize, and the list goes on. In each of these ways, what the Church advocates is what is called a consistent ethic of life, the commitment to protecting the authentic human development of all in every circumstance. Although each issue is distinct, the Church notes that they are interconnected and woven together like a seamless garment, and all must be a priority if any are a priority. And for most, this makes perfect sense. As the Church, those gathered in love to promote the peace of the kingdom, protecting human life is sort of what we're about. And yet, there is a temptation in some to wonder, why? If this world is passing away for the sake of the eternal kingdom, why should we care about politics or creation or physical suffering? Shouldn't our only care be about getting people's souls into heaven? On the one hand, it's a really interesting question, one that challenges us to focus on what really matters, to not get distracted by the allurements of the world, but to keep our eyes on spiritual matters. On the other hand, it's a tragically flawed question with a number of problems. For one, it diminishes the goodness of creation as a part of salvation history. In the book of Genesis, we read that everything in existence was created by God, and that after everything was created, God said that it was good. Creation, in whatever form it takes, is not something that can be simply cast off, but is rather a gift, and humanity is given the responsibility of stewarding it. But it's more than that. As Christians, we know that creation is good because God uses it to share God's very presence with us. We see this, of course, in our sacraments, where ordinary, physical materials are transformed to give us tangible experiences of God's grace, but there's also an even bigger reason. The Incarnation. Oh yeah, that. Jesus did not appear to us simply as a spirit or vision, but actually took on flesh, becoming incarnate and sharing in our very human nature. If the creator of the whole universe becomes a part of that creation, it's probably a good indication that we should care about the physical world. Beyond this, there is a major misunderstanding of what the Church believes about the nature of the human person. For most people, there's sort of this idea in our imaginations that a human being is a spirit trapped inside a physical body. The body is weak and dies, and when this happens, the soul, what really matters, leaves to live an eternal spiritual life. This was the case for the Greek philosopher Plato, who believed that the soul did not need a body to exist, as well as for the Gnostics, who believed that the body was actually evil and the point of life was to escape the physical world. But it's not the case for Christians. In fact, there's a line in our ancient creed specifically meant to combat this. In the Apostles' Creed, the text concludes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Yes, the resurrection of the body. For Christians, there is a distinction between body and soul, but we reject the idea that a soul is all that matters to the human person or that it can exist outside of the body. A human person is the combination of soul and body, the union of the two that give life to one another. What would a soul be without a body to give it existence in the physical world? What would a body be without a soul to animate it? To say that we should only be concerned with a person's soul at the expense of their body doesn't recognize the wholeness of the person, respect the belief in the resurrection of the body, or realize that our physical conditions actually do play a part in affecting our souls. Pain, abuse, hunger, and violence felt physically in the body contribute to the health, well-being, and even salvation of our souls. Finally, and maybe most important to the question at hand, is the matter of salvation itself. What and where is heaven? 
Often, we have this understanding of heaven as this otherworldly, distant existence, completely removed from our lives. It is a place where we go if we are found pleasing to God at our deaths, but before then, there is a giant chasm that separates the physical world we live in and the spiritual world of heaven. Except, we believe that we are in relationship with the communion of saints, offering us access to heaven even now. Except, the Mass and other sacraments bind us to God, offering us a taste of the eternal kingdom even here. Except, Jesus came announcing that the kingdom of heaven was at hand, that the glory of God in breaking. As much as the fullness of heaven lies beyond our grasp and remains a gift to be given, glimpses of it are all around us in the physical world. In coming to the earth as he did and taking on flesh, Jesus offered us a taste of that kingdom in the here and now. And look at how he did that. By teaching and preaching, yes, but also by feeding the hungry, healing the sick, welcoming the outcasts, challenging forces of oppression, and even raising the dead. Why would he do all of this if all that mattered was the soul? Why would he care so much about our world, our society, and our finite bodies if all of this was just going to pass away? He does so because there is an inherent connection between the physical and the spiritual because he created not just the soul, but also the body, because he wants to redeem it all and bring the whole person into the glory of God. And so, why are Catholics so vehemently pro-life? Why do we care so much about fixing this world and building a just society when it will ultimately fade away? In short, because it's the only world we have to know and love our God. Sure, there might be another world yet to come, one with glorified bodies and a perfect kingdom. But at this point, we can only know God through the creation we have, the bodies we live in, and the commands we've received from Jesus. If Jesus came to lead people to heaven, but spent most of his time tending to the physical ailments of the world, then my guess is that the two are intimately connected. As Catholics, we don't just want to save souls. We want to love the entire person that Jesus came to save. Thanks for watching this episode of Catholicism in Focus, brought to you by Nicholas Marinelli and all the patrons on Patreon. If you're looking to learn more about how Catholics worship, why we do what we do at Mass, join me each Friday for a new video and blog post in my new series, Understanding the Mass. You can get more from Breaking in the Habit by subscribing here, going to my blog, or by following me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram.